Welcome to the Ultimate Life Television Program, brought to you by Pastor Gracia Selassie Awie of Treasure House ICGC, where you are treasured and not trashed. Welcome to the Ultimate Life Broadcast. I'm your host, Gracia Selassie Awie, Pastor of Treasure House ICGC. Jesus said, I'm come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. It's life, it's life above the ordinary. It's called the ultimate life. On this program, you are presented with a blueprint for the ultimate life. So expect to be changed, expect to grow, expect the ultimate life. Welcome to part two of Don't Add to Your Desperation. And I trust that today's message will impact you. Let's get into the word. And his children, it shared his food, drank from his cup, and even slept in his arms. It was like a daughter to him. Now a traveler came to the rich man, but the rich man refrained from taking one of his own sheep or cattle to prepare a meal for the traveler who had come to him. Instead, he took the air lamb that belonged to the poor man and prepared it for the one who had come to him. David turned with anger against the man and said to Nathan, As surely as the Lord lives the man who did this must die he must pay for that lamb four times over because he did such a thing and had no pity then nathan said to david you are the man this is what the lord the god of israel says i anointed you king over israel and i delivered you from the hand of saul i gave you i gave your master's house to you and your master's wives into your arms i gave you all israel and judah and if all this had been too little, I would have given you even more. Why did you despise the word of the Lord by doing what is evil in his eyes? You struck down Uriah the Hittite with the sword and took his wife to be your own. You killed him with the sword of the Ammonites. Now, therefore, the sword will never depart from your house because you despised me and took the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your own. This is what the Lord says, out of your own household, I'm going to bring calamity on you. Before your very eyes, I will take your wives and give them to one who is close to you, and you will sleep with your wives in broad daylight. You did it in secret, but I will do this thing in broad daylight before all Israel. The Bible says one day when kings go to war, David stayed at home. He lost his way. He didn't understand the purpose of his life. So he's lying at home on the balcony, looking over, and he sees a woman naked, taking a bath. That should have been the first sign of trouble. Who takes a bath on the roof, nude? They, they are not candidates for marriage. He sleeps with her. He gets pregnant. Now, having lost his way, he loses his mind. He goes and finds the husband, Uriah, one of his 30 men who are fighting for him. He gets him to come home and sleep with his wife. But Uriah is a better man than him. And he doesn't. So David sends him to the battlefront with a message in his hands. The message is to the commander of the army. And he tells him, put him in front of the battle where the heat of the battle is so that he can fight there and in the end uriah gets killed uriah was carrying his own death sentence in his own hands only if he was awake he goes into the battle or he goes into the battle front he ends up dying and he ends up losing his life isn't that just isn't is it isn't that just tragic i'm sure david was thinking that it's all solved now it was quite a desperate situation but hey, it's fixed up now we fix it god says no we are not fixed up david you lost your way now you've lost your mind and you need wisdom in your desperation notice how nathan talks about this whole situation to david god was telling him you try to steal someone else's destiny, but you know what is brought upon you tragedy. Your household will be filled with division, 
there will be judgment in your house there will be rebellion in your household and david reaps the consequences because the child of Bathsheba dies you can steal someone else's property and make it your own you can steal someone else's property and make it yours in your desperation and make yourself happy you need the wisdom of God in your life the next point is nothing we do or take outside of God's will can bring happiness if today you are desperate to be happy don't take or do anything outside God's will it doesn't work yeah but uh, you, you have to try uh, you know you, you have to try that <laughs> there was this person I know they they did that and and it worked out don't you do it you need wisdom in desperation not more foolishness next point just because we can take something doesn't mean it's ours it doesn't mean it's right and it doesn't mean it's safe this woman had the opportunity to go during the night and steal the living child and replace it with a dead one she could do it but it didn't mean it was right it didn't mean it was hers and it didn't mean it was safe because in the end she got judged by the king and lost that child if you lose your way don't lose your mind realize that when god first acts there is a challenge is the next point realize that when god first acts there is a challenge so you are desperate and you go to god and he's about to give you a word or he's about to respond to you guess what it never comes with comfort he doesn't tell you what you want to hear so you go to somebody else to ask him if they've got a word for you when you try to solve a problem in your desperation you need severity sometimes when they went to the king with the baby the king said bring me a sword i'm sure they thought if we knew this was going to happen we wouldn't have come here for the mother that freaked her out she almost passed out but this is the way or this is the very thing let me put it that way this is the very thing that brought the solution and opened up the festering wound that brought the truth to the surface but it was what was needed it was what was needed oh shame you you must be hurting it's not what was needed it's the sword that was needed the Bible says that for the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 and 13. when you need help in your desperation god will bring you a word but it's often a challenge when you are in a desperate place you don't need a word of comfort you need a word of clear instruction that brings you to your senses and takes away the nonsense the sword needs to divide because you are not seeing in the morning light you are seeing with emotion when you should be seeing with wisdom when he brought that sword when he brought that sword everything became clear when the sword was brought out everything became clear there was no dna in those days because if they had dna they could have done dna and solved this problem he needed something to bring it to light. We don't need DNA. We just need the word. I'm not against medicine. We mustn't resort to science before we resort to the word. The word will give us clarity. 
and the word will bring a challenge but it will speak to you when the prodigal son left home and lost his mind and ended up in a desperate situation it wasn't the counselor who came to him and said shame aren't you that rich boy from down there what are you doing here oh my way your mom must be missing you come let me take you home guess what it was the pigs who spoke to him sometimes you need a challenge you don't need comfort and we spoil the purposes of god when we bring comfort what we need is the truthful word to cut through the nonsense and to bring the wisdom of god the next point is god can reverse any situation if we come to him god can reverse any situation if we come to him god is a god of reversals the enemy wants to give you his tragedy for your destiny but god wants to switch it back again and when we come to him he solves it when they went to the king he changed everything jesus the bible says is a greater than solomon in him are all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge and when you come to him he sorts it out in fact god is the god of the great reversal god is the god of the great reversal second corinthians chapter 8 verse 9 It says for you know the grace of our lord jesus christ that though he was rich yet for your sake he became poor so that you through his poverty might become rich the great reversal god takes christ's riches gives them to our poverty he takes our poverty gives them to christ he's the one who reverses tragedy for destiny the next point is the devil gives tragedy for destiny god gives destiny for tragedy god made him scripture says who knew no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of god second point is by 5 verse 21 the devil gives tragedy for destiny god gives destiny for tragedy god made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of god let's look at another scripture in the book of isaiah chapter 61 verse 3 it says and provide for those who grieve in zion to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes the oil of joy instead of mourning and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair they will be called oaks of righteousness a planting of the lord for the display of his splendor god gives you an instead of that's the exact opposite to what the devil gives you but you've got to come to him you've got to present yourself before the king you can't just get a little word send me a message you need to go before him and say here i am whatever you say i will do and then the great reversal comes and the, the and, and and the woman got a child back and she was saved and blessed the next point is what we let go of will always receive restored what we let go of will always receive restored when when you hold on to your mess and onto your desperation you won't receive an answer from god but when you let go that's when the king can decide on your behalf i imagine that this rightful mother must have really struggled as she went before the king and as she stood there she probably thought this all hinges on what this man says solomon had a thousand wives what if he found the second prostitute attractive but she had to trust him it's quite an amazing thing that the prostitutes were allowed to appear before king solomon it tells me they had access to the king 
and that he was a merciful king and he didn't look at uh station or race or position in life he looked at people and he valued them he's a picture of the lord jesus the lord jesus is hidden in that old testament message or passage forgive me the lord jesus is hidden in that old testament passage he's a picture of wisdom and mercy and any one of us who messes up can come before him and if we give our all to him and we trust him we can experience mercy and we can experience a reversal he doesn't turn any one of us away if we are in a place of desperation the next point is he will do the right thing at the right time so let's look at how to get out of a desperate situation how to get out of a desperate situation you need to change your life is the first one what i mean is you can't free yourself from sin but many of our problems start with our lifestyle these two women their problems did not stem from satanic operation it stemmed, it stemmed from a lifestyle they chose it stemmed from a lifestyle they chose prostitution was at the root of what they were doing they should have made a, a decision in las vegas there is an organization today called hookers for jesus these are women who have decided they are no longer going to uh, sleep around with people who frequent casinos they are going to leave they are going they, they, they are going to get involved with the purposes of god they don't uh, change overnight but that decision is the first to getting out of desperation and heading towards wisdom many of us our problems are not because the devil got in but because our lifestyle or our lifestyle choice was not wise but because our lifestyle choice was not wise and and we got desperate about money desperate about relationships and we ended up doing stuff we shouldn't have done i read about this man his name is uh, aldrich amis he was a cia operative knew all the secrets of the uh, CIA. He was earning at the time, many years back, $60,000 a year, living pretty well. But he had a taste for fine things. As a result, his wife had a taste for fine things too. So guess what he did? He started selling the CIA secrets to the Russians. He became a spy. He started earning $600,000 a year. They started living in the lap of luxury why he got desperate for money and so he made desperate decisions well guess what like everyone they got caught his wife got five years in prison for tax evasion and when they went into his house 500 pairs of shoes were found there 169 packets of an open uh, panty hose desperate people do stupid things they add foolishness to their desperation and he ended up with life in prison they asked him how could you do this what was wrong with you his lifestyle was the problem he said this and he was quoting someone in america who had done this he said you might as well ask why a middle-aged man with no criminal record will put a paper bag over his head and rob a bank someone did this in america and he was showing the parallel he said this i acted out of desperation i did something uh, uncharacteristic because my lifestyle took me down a road of desperation i lost my way but i lost my mind you've got to change your lifestyle the next point is you need to change your relationships the people you associate with can be the cause of your problems these two women chose the wrong kind of relationships they let men use them they also uh, ended up sharing a house how many of you know this woman was an enemy 
of that one you've got to be careful who you sleep with who is sleeping in the same house as you next point is guard your heart keep your heart with all diligence be spiritually awake keep your heart alive don't let anyone sow weeds in it and keep yourself in a place where you are looking at everything in the light of the morning in the light of the world the next point is you need to fight back fight back don't accept what the enemy puts in your arms what are you embracing today that is not your destiny it's someone else's tragedy fight back say i don't receive this i'm not taking this sickness i'm not taking this mess i'm not taking this family on no more i, I will fight back i want my destiny not someone else's tragedy the next point is find mercy and justice in christ the king king jesus greater than solomon wants to give you wisdom he wants to give you mercy and justice today but you've got to come to him they came to solomon and they presented themselves to him you need to come to the father in the name of jesus and tell him i'm at your throne would you help me and uh, he does wonderful things to those who have who have submitted themselves to him if you submit yourself to him he will do amazing things with you when, when, when you are desperate don't add foolishness to it come to the one who has got wisdom and can help you today as as i bring this message to a close there are two types of people in the world today and there are two types of people in this story watching this uh, program today there are only two types of people the first type those who rely on themselves and they are weak when they mess up and fall those who rely on themselves and they are weak when they mess up and fall the first prostitute the first prostitute forgive me when she messed up her life what did she do she relied on her wits she made up a scheme she she had messed up now she's thought of a way she could uh i mean, I mean fix it i mean wangle it second group of people those who despite their failures and their wrong choices rely on the king which one will you be today ask yourself that question which one will i be today will i be someone who wangles and and goes from bad to worse or Will, will I be one who comes to the king and relies on him and finds wisdom in my desperation? I want to finish with this story. In 1996, a man by the name of Andrew Mickens was an elder in the International Evangelical Church of Addis Ababa. He found himself in an unfortunate and desperate situation. He was on board a hijacked Ethiopian Airways uh, plane, which, which was running out of fuel it eventually made an emergency crash landing near uh, the comoros island according to some of those who survived the crash landing it was a desperate situation Mickens stood up and spoke to the passengers presenting the gospel to them before the crash about 20 people on that flight received jesus gave their life to Christ, including a flight attendant who did not survive. When I read that story, I realized this. Our earth has been hijacked by sin. It's on a collision course and it's about to be destroyed. The Lord Jesus is going to come back one day and everything is going to change. In the meantime, there are desperate people making desperate decisions grabbing at each other's lives trying to save themselves trying to find happiness here and there trying to exchange tragedy for destiny when instead they should be looking to the king and laying hold of him if you are listening to me today and you haven't handed over ownership of your life to christ i want to encourage you to do that i'm going to pray a simple prayer i'm going to give you the words you are the heart to it Pray this prayer with me. Say, Father, today I recognize that I'm a sinner who needs a savior. Forgive me of all my sins. Have mercy on me. I've messed up. Be merciful to me. 
I believe with all my heart that you died for me and you rose again. And with my mouth, I confess your lordship over my life. Come into my life. Change me. Make me a new creature. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me live for you all the days of my life. If you pray this simple prayer, once you know you are born again, you are saved, you are now a child of God. Heaven is rejoicing because of you. Welcome into God's kingdom. I trust that today's message has impacted your life and uh, equipped you to fulfill your destiny and be all that God wants you to be. Thank you for tuning in and I look forward to coming your way next time. But remember, if you want a life that is going to be as abundant as possible without chaos and confusion, don't live it any other way. Live it by God's word. Be blessed. Have a good day. Thank you for watching the Ultimate Life Television program. We hope you have been blessed by the teaching. Tune in to our next program on the same channel and the same time next week. You are cordially invited to visit Treasure House ICGC for our Sunday morning church services at the New Horizon Center, South Lodge Avenue, adjacent to the Pollard's Hill Library, CR41LT. For ministry products and other information, please contact us on 0208-355-3461 or send an email to pastor at treasurehouseicgc.co.uk. You may also visit our website www.treasurehouseicgc.co.uk. Our service times are as follows, Sunday 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. and Wednesday 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. You can also download our ministry app, Gracious Awaye, to listen to Pastor Gray's messages from the Apple Store or Google Play Store. May God richly bless you.